Hello and welcome back to the Urquan Masters Hardcore Challenge. This is episode 18. We're making our way to Gamma Brahe 1. It's the second of the egg case fragment planets. And uh, we've got to collect all these things because we can trade them off to the Druge. Nearly forgot the name there. And we get the Rosy Sphere and we can also get a Mauler if we want as well without having to give away crew. Uh, which I think I actually did on my original playthrough, I can't remember. Uh, apparently actually I didn't realise this. I didn't sell enough crew to have seen this but if you sell enough crew, then the cost of crew in the Starbase actually starts to go up. Uh, it doesn't really matter in this case, I suppose, but we have so, we're so long crew anyway that I don't think we'll really be able to um, afford doing that. So best to just get the egg case fragments. We also need to show the Cyrene, or we need to go to the uh, Aralu to find out about the fact that the Micon put their uh, deep children into the planets to terraform them, which is of course what happened to Syrah. And then we need to go and tell the Cyrene about what happened, they'll get really angry, and then we need to go and unlock all their ships from the vault, I think. So, yes, that's, I think, how it works. I've got a list here, we haven't got to that yet, That's I've not recorded that yet, so that will have to be done in episode 21 and later. Uh, but right now, we're going through Micon Hyperspace, it's a bit of a grind. Uh, this this has been what it's like for the last few episodes. Once we get over here, I don't think we really have to see the Micon again, we just have to uh, go... Actually, no, we might have to see a few of the Micon because we need to go back to uh, trigger the ambush and to also get the sun device to unlock the Shemur. And then we get close to the end of the game. Uh, so yeah, this is how it's how it's how it's going so far. Just uh, just just riding slowly out of this horrible area of space uh, for these quests. See, I think uh, last time I said I'll talk about Origins. Now, uh, I know that Origins doesn't have any of the normal races from the from these games like it doesn't have any of the urquan or anything like that uh i think i saw something that has like some form of the aralu in it which i thought they weren't allowed to do but apparently they are i don't know uh but it seems to all have like settled down now the dust has settled after like a bit of a back and forth between friend paul and the star dot people and uh i might play origins who knows i don't think i'm gonna have quite as much it's gonna be really weird playing it having this sort of story in my mind and knowing that none of it sort of <laughs> matters. It's like a pre it's funny, it's like a prequel to Star Control, even though it's not in the same universe, so I don't really understand how it is a prequel. It's just like sort of like its own game, I suppose. But I might play it, probably not for the channel, to be honest, because you know, the reason that this has taken so long to get out is just because I don't have much time as I used to. Um, so especially with all the other, you know, non work stuff, non university stuff I'm doing anyway. Uh, but I still, I might play it, who knows, uh, but I haven't really thought about it that much. I sort of forgot about it, to be honest. Um, so yeah, that's 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 pretty much all there is to it. I know that Fred and Paul, then, apparently, I think they're working on something else at the moment, and then they're allowed to make their own sequel to Star Control 2 if they want to. And they used, they were going to call it Ghost of the Precursors, but they changed the name. Or they said that they're going to not use that name, and they're going to use a better name that isn't quite so generic. And so I suppose that will then become the sequel to this version of the story of Star Control, which is kind of, I think, the one that I'm looking forward to, to be honest, because it's in the same way that I was, you know, interested in Project 6014 when that was still pretty active. Uh, and I I think if if the um, if I have a lot of time and Fred and Paul don't end up making their sequel, then maybe I'll think more carefully about whether or not I can help with the Project 6014 thing, try and get it back up and running again, because uh, they didn't really get much done after the demo, the original demo. And I know that they're looking for programmers, and back then I wasn't much, I hadn't done much programming at all, but since then I've done quite a lot of Java, I've done a little bit of C++. Uh, I think the game is in, I think it's in C, or C++, I think, th this game. So, I know that C++, I know a little bit of C++. C++ is not as similar to Java as some people think, and C is even less similar to C++ than Java is to C++. So, that's a little bit of a stepping stone that would need to happen if I was to get involved. But, if I have the time, why not? Because it's the thing I'm looking at, you know, the thing I'm interested in. Uh, oh dear, I just crashed that. Uh, yeah, so I think I realised last time, I was looking through the footage of the last episode, but I actually um, kept in one of the, the fights that I had with the Micon uh, when I crashed into a planet just as I was defeating the last of the, the group of the Micon. And I left that in just as like a blooper sort of thing. I didn't, I just was talking over it and just didn't realise, but that's why there was that weird bit where I crashed and restarted, if you're wondering. Uh, most of the time I cut out all the fails just because there's like quite a lot of them. Uh, there were so many with the um, with the Spathy versus the Ilra, if you remember that, episode 9 or 10 or whatever it was. Uh, that was part of why it took so long for me to get back into it because that fight just took so long and so difficult because obviously the Ilrath uh, go invisible 
and the spathy missiles don't track anymore, so you have to like line up. It doesn't do that much damage. It's, you've got to make sure you don't get too close, of course, because otherwise you get killed. So that was that was horrible. Uh, but we got past that now, and it's the Micron. It's actually not that bad a fight. It's just the fact there's so many of them that I think is kind of frustrating. It's just they see, there seems to be so many. I've also noticed that the AI are very, uh, very reluctant to do anything but heal when they've like lost a bit of crew. Like they'll wait for their battery. You can see it's actually they're doing it now. You see they're they're waiting for their battery to recharge to to reheal crew, and they seem to always do that when they're when they they've even lost a little bit tiny bit of crew. It seems to be like their m main priority unless you're very close. So that makes it even slower as well if you're not. Oh my goodness, that was close. Uh, it seems to make it even uh, more difficult because or, or even longer fights because that's their prioritization. Uh, so, doing the normal thing of uh, if a Pukunk ship dies and reheals, then actually I gain seven crew because I go in there with one uh, Pukunk crewman, just the uh, the main uh, commander, I guess, of the ship. And if they the uh, rejuvenate, then I've got seven more crew, and I then put that into the uh, into the flagship, into the Ice Fist. Mm. At least I don't have to deal with the probes anymore. I think it was a good decision to beeline for stopping them. Uh, and not have to deal with them anymore because although actually the Spathy are pretty powerful against them and are basically impossible to lose to as long as you, you know, get the get the timing of turning around right at the top of the screen so they start chasing you, um, it probably would have been quite annoying to have to deal with them on top of all the Micon. Or well, I still have to deal with them. There's another one there, but there's fewer there's fewer of them than there would be if um, I hadn't gone and got the self destruct secret straight away. So at least that that's that's uh, that's easier. I'm actually gathering quite a lot of resource units, <laughs> like just by, you know, harvesting the bits of Slylandro probe. Um, but obviously I can't use them at all. I actually don't know how does it work. I, one thing I don't know about the Starbase challenge is, of course, I talked about last time about how the fact that there's an actual Starbase challenge version of this uh, game on the Mega Mod. But how does it work in the normal HD or the normal Ocarina Master if you don't visit the Starbase? Does it just uh, does it just like not? Do, do you still visit the starbase? Do you still go to Commander Hayes to talk about what the Shamur have installed on your ship, or do you just literally not even do that? I don't actually know how it works. I seem to remember reading somewhere that they changed, like they fixed a bug where it would crash when you hadn't visited the starbase, and then triggered that sort of end sequence by going to the Shamur and having them install that thing. But I I can't remember exactly what what happens. Uh, but either way, if if we do go to the starbase, if it does like kick us into the starbase to talk to Commander Hayes. Then I guess the way to I guess what we have to do is just do nothing. Like you can't build anything. Like you can't even build anything at all. You just go out of the menu and just leave leave the starbase straight away. Um, if that happens, but it could be that it doesn't it doesn't send us to the starbase at all. It just sends us to like Earth or outside the starbase, like on the map or something. I don't know. But we'll we'll worry about that when we get to it. Uh, it's it's not a big deal. One thing I've just thought about as well, obviously I was just a few minutes ago talking about Star Control Origins and uh, you know, the, where that gets placed in the story of these games. There's also of course Star Control 3, which um, I was looking at the reviews for it and apparently it's actually quite good, but uh, lots of people sort of don't like it because it's just so weird. Like in the, in the As a game, as a standalone game, it's quite good, but in the context of Star Control 2, it's really strange, like the way they continue the story. Um, so I haven't played that either. Don't really plan to. It looks kind of weird. Some of the animations on like some of the um, some of the races that like, they use sort of like almost it almost looks like sock puppets. I don't know. It's I, I haven't looked at it for a little while, but I seem to remember it looking kind of strange. And uh, so I probably won't ever play that either. And then of course they also had plans to make Star Control Four, which was going to be called Starcon, but that never really materialised. It would have been strange, I think, if it felt like the series... I think what would have happened with all these new versions of the game, made by different developers, it probably would have become something very, very different. And so, kind of glad that it didn't. Uh, because maybe this... it would have tarnished the reputa reputation of the original... the original two games, especially this one. So here we are, we finally made it! We finally made it to Gamma Barahe. Uh, another egg case fragment. Doesn't seem to be any mic on here, which is nice. Nice to not have any in the solar system itself, because that is also really punishing when there's like, you know, like millions of Micon ships like converging on your position, especially when you're moving there slowly. Um, so here's another one, Shattered World. Usual thing, sort of like a metal world basically, but with encased fragments on it. There it is. Fantastic. And that's two of three. So yeah, this one, this episode is coming to an end now. It's a little bit shorter 
than the last one. But as I said before, the next one's like half an hour, I think. Uh, I d at some point, I decided that the footage was going to be cut up in this weird way. I'm not quite sure why. I guess because I felt that getting the egg case fragments from Gambrahe was like, you know, a good ending. But actually, there's another egg case fragment to come, which is Beta Copernicus. So once we got that, then we can move on to, uh, first of all, convince the Pekunk to return, and then get the Cyrene on the offensive. Destroy the Micon once and for all. See you next time.